And it doesn't surprise me that large language model, which is trained on text that might have been written by people who don't fully understand this, it'll repeat the mistakes made by Chag tutors. So let me put in this question. So this is the next set, Atomic Physics. Oh, this is the one <laughs> that's due uh, tonight. So let me close this. I'm not going to be showing model answers to this. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, quantum numbers. And L. Uh, I know the L doesn't look um, quite right, but um, it, within... Um, Within LaTeX, there's actually a character that's a distinct, distinct from lowercase l. That's what this is, but I, I don't have a good way to type it. I could spell it out, but I think it's going to be more confusing than um, illuminating for chat. Wait, N L M L. Oh, I see. I um, should have been here, and I should not put this in here. These are standard symbols, your textbook uses M in place of the unambiguous M underscore O. This is the significance of each one. I think uh, ChatGPT will get this right. It's uh, the kind of questions that it does relatively well on, recalling definitions and whatnot. Uh, your principal quantum number, azimuth of quantum number. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Magnetic quantum number. Yeah. And this should be L. Um, I mean, it, it probably is. It's, it's just my font. It doesn't show it well. Um, uh, I don't know if that's uh, correct to this question, but close enough. Because um, uh, really, the special axis is the G axis, and the X and Y are not really distinguished from each other in this setting. Uh, spin quantum number, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that that's um, correct <laughs> enough. So, uh, it's the kind of the question that ChatGPT does well. All right. Uh, so I don't think I've ever asked this question of uh, ChatGPT. I don't know. But I finally learned how to type uh, all umlaut, so I might do this uh, more often. Because um, I know some people who spell Schrodinger like this. I will never do that myself because that's wrong. Um, <laughs> it's either OE or O umlaut. But now that I've learned how to finally type O umlaut, I might do that more. I probably should have fixed this question. Oh. Anyway. Sorry, it's a little jerky the way. Uh, yeah, I think they changed the, how the screen advances with the text, and I, I don't think I like it. Yeah. Right, the Bohr model of uh, compare um, energy levels. Yeah, correctly predict orbit. It should have been correct. Uh, it doesn't say whether that's correct or not. No. <laughs> I mean, it is incorrect part. Well defined, the circle orbits are not something that exists in quantum mechanics. Um, emission, yeah, that's correct. It goes with the energy levels. Although I guess uh, Bohr model doesn't predict the selection rules. <laughs> Stability of the atom, yeah. Uh, miss some, yeah, misses that. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a. I mean, it comes comes with the classical, semi-classical nature of a Bohr model. Uh, yeah, so I think it missed the most important one, which is the fact that in the ground state, um, in the Bohr model, in the ground state, the electron has non-zero angular momentum. But in the fully quantum mechanical version, that's really what the hint is getting at. In the ground state, the, the angular momentum of the orbital angular momentum of the electron is zero, and, um, and yeah. So based on missing that, I think I'm gonna say this answer is wrong. Like an answer this long should not be missing that crucial fact like that. Um, so I mean, it's one thing if. Uh, 
ChatGPT gave me simple two paragraph answer, but in like five long paragraphs, it should have really gotten that salient uh, difference right. I had a math professor who, right before midterm exams, would say, um, so um, like every irrelevant thing that we write down also counts as incorrect, which is kind of, you know, something I would never say before my exams because it stresses people out. But, um, but you know, when you are grading, it's uh, frustrating when someone gives a really long answer that doesn't actually um, have all the right points. Uh, let's see, spectralize. Yeah, that's a Jiman effect. Um, yeah, Jiman effect. <laughs> um, emotional charge particle. Um, I mean, yeah, sh sure, I guess. Um, there's also spin angular momentum, so it doesn't really have to be motion. But it's fine. Semi-classical, I, I think I'm okay. Interaction, yeah. And now, once I hear, look at the term like a Hamiltonian, I'm gonna think you use the ChatGPT. Because I don't think I ever once, not once mentioned Hamiltonian. And I'm not sure if your textbook ever mentions Hamiltonian. It's the kind of topic that, um, Unless you can actually go into details of Hamiltonian mechanics with me, um, I'll think, oh, you got some help from outside. And <laughs> unless you can go into whole, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, canonical um, commutation relation and all that stuff, uh, I'm going to think. That, uh, actually, let me so search for Hamiltonian. I don't know if your textbook mentions the word Hamiltonian. Yeah, so like this word should not be in your answer because it, that's like a first sign that someone's getting help that they shouldn't be getting. Or, you know, if you are getting that help, you should actually fully dive into it, um, not just copy and paste something that you don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, what determines the number and spacing? Uh, yeah, and no. um, maybe there's two different regimes. There's a regime where uh, um, you treat the, the combined total angular momentum as the good quantum number. And there's a regime where you treat the um, kind of these two values are separated as good quantum number. That's a kind of upper digit material um, too much to go into. Um, maybe only one outcome. Really? That doesn't sound right. Because if it's n equals 2, um, L can be 1, 0, minus 1. So I'm pretty sure this is wrong. Um, like, it's going to be, it should be more than 2. Like at least the three just the considering orbital angular momentum. And like if a spin angular momentum factors in, then even six. So, so I'm gonna say that's wrong. Um, because given the length of, it's a, on the basis of this paragraph, that's not quite right. Because um, for any, for ground state, yes, it will split into two. Uh, spin up and spin down, and that's basically it. For the first excited state, you're so you have these possible um, quantum numbers. You could have uh, so for n equals two state, your l could be one or zero, and if your l is one, your ml could be plus one, zero, minus one. Or it could be, um, you know, zero for zero, um, and your ms can be plus minus one half, and um, so all the so these three states at least this, this, and this they'll have different energy levels under the applied external magnetic field. So you have a minimum of three levels uh, that you have, and 
where they split into two components, then uh, no, um, two is too few. So, and by the way, I don't think I'm expecting that many details in the answer. It's just that when your if your answer is that long and that detailed, like ChatGPT is, is, then it should be correct. <laughs> I, I'm fine with you know. Um, so I think if we had simply ended here. Um, like ended with this paragraph, I would have considered that to be the correct answer because that matches with the level of detail we cover in lecture. Um, it's when the ChatGPT goes into further detail, that further detail should be correct. <laughs> or if you don't know it to be correct, you should you know, um, stop at where uh, you have finished saying the correct and relevant things. And again, I'm being um, harsher than I would be with the student answers because it's ChatGPT. I don't respect it. Um, possible SNNS for three. Oh, yeah. Uh, so proton and neutron, it's same as electron. Photon is going to be an interesting one. Um, so I oh, so this is actually one where I want to Google search. Um, like spin states of photon. That's an, uh, actually an interesting one. Um, yeah, yeah. Since it has no rest of mass, uh, wait, wait, that is not quite right. So uh, I'll come back to photon in a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, proton. Yeah, yeah. Same as electron. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it's a photon answer. Um, it could be considered right. So uh, what it means by since it has no rest of mass. Um, so when we talk about the uh, spin projection state, we are considering it in the rest frame of the particle. And because photon has no rest of mass, it doesn't have a rest frame. There's no inertial reference frame where a photon would be at rest. Um, but you can connect the helicity to this uh, magnetic quantum number uh, by uh, considering a situation like this, if a photon is traveling from uh, left to right, and then I can define my t-axis along the same direction t. So I can have a photon that whose spin is aligned along this direction. This would be what um, this would call right-handed state, and or I could have a photon that whose spin point. Um, so these are two possible spin states for the um, for the photon. Now this is the surprising thing. So photon has a spin magnitude of one, and these two projection states they correspond to ms of plus one and ms of minus one. And what's missing here is that in between. A photon will never be found in this uh, uh, non-stretched state. It will never be found in a state where its uh, angular momentum projection is zero along the chosen axis. It's missing. And it's a special feature you find in massless particles. Or um, as a particle, even massive particles like a neutrino, as they get into ultra-relativistic uh, kind of speeds, regime, the, the only spin state you will find are the, the extreme ones. Although, you know, neutrino is spin half, so it only has those two. But any higher spin value, the particles will be missing those in between ones. That's the surprising thing. I don't know if uh, I would necessarily expect to find that um, statement in the student answer. Um, but, um, so yeah, the, the ChatGPT answer here is correct enough. So let me continue. Um, Yeah. So it would be somebody's Pauli exclusion principle. Oh, yeah. Um, explain the importance of the spring. I mean, that it determines the periodic table. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. The atomic structure. Yeah, electron configuration. Yeah. Um, Yes, the, it's, I mean, it's a little long, but yeah, it's fine. Um, it's actually the, 
other way around. It's a Fermi Dirac statistics that leads to a Pauli exclusion principle, but that's why. <laughs> um, yeah. So the fundamental concept in quantum mechanics is actually the, the symmetrization requirement, which leads to Pauli exclusion principle for fermions. But um, so it's the other way around. <laughs> Pauli exclusion principle. I guess in chemistry, they would consider this to be the fundamental principle. But if you're doing quantum mechanics or particle physics, what's fundamental is the symmetrization requirement or Symmetrization requirement for bosons and anti-symmetrization requirement for fermions. So, yeah, but this is correct enough again, over long, but yeah. I wonder if, uh, um, please uh, give an answer within a paragraph or so. I'm pretty sure um, you can make it give you a short answer by modifying your prompt the way I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, 